Human lives, unfortunately, are full of psychological tricks that we play with ourselves. All day, you do it. The trick of condemning your future to your past you see first as a child. Children learn how to do this very quickly. When they see another child over there that they don't like, and that person loses a game, they say, Loser! Loser! What they're really doing here is they're turning a one-time action that has happened in the past into a permanent part of their being into a permanent part of their personality. It's who they are. They are a loser. You have not only lost, but you were a loser. You have not only failed to act, but you were a coward. You have not only suffered, but you are a sufferer. And you will always be that way because that's who you are. But that's a lie. That's a damn lie. Your past is not your future. You have doubtlessly seen people who suffer or seen people who sit and say, you know, I wanted to learn how to uh, play a music instrument like guitar or piano, but I'm just not good at it, or uh, I suck at math. Nobody is born being good at math or biology or, or piano. Even the greatest pianist had to sit down and take a lot of effort and take a lot of risk too, because anytime you do anything, that is an investment in your life. And investment takes risk because you have decided not to do everything else that you could be doing and spend your time pressing C and D and E. It's risk, it takes effort, it's hard. This thing, the condemnation of the future to your past or, or the making static of verbs, your past actions becoming a permanent part of who you are, I think is a fallacy that is responsible for the great deal of human suffering. Not only suffering, but passiveness, as I described with the music and the math example. People that think that they cannot do something, they think it becomes a part of them. They give up. A great deal of this futurizing of the past happens due to something that I call getting fucked in the ass too many times. Because if you're the kind of person that comes home after a long day of work and turns on the television and every day complains about what the government's doing with your tax money, how they're incompetent, if you uh, ha are having such a bad life as to personify life itself and saying that life beats you down as if life is this slave master over you that's just beating you because he likes to play tricks with you. When a string of bad events comes, when there is an, a seemingly inalterable institution that is pervasive in your life, you are getting fucked in the ass too many times over and eventually you're gonna give up, probably. If you, this, I think this is the essence of being old. Oldness really comes from this. Oldness is being fucked over too many times. Because I always see old people saying, uh, like one of two things. I have no idea if I'm gonna remember the second thing, but I'm gonna say the first thing. They're, they're always saying, uh, you young people need to change things. When I was young, we were out having protests. We had valuable culture. We were creating music and doing drugs. If we had vision, the, the system is too messed up and us old people are tired and you young people are the real ones that always, that have to bring the change. It has to be the next generation. It has to be the next generation. Even though they have accumulated all the time through retirement, all the money, all the, uh, all the knowledge, all the social connections, even though they have a longer inspired vision, because one thing that young people are always, uh, said to have is passion, is idealism, is vision for the future, for a different way of doing things. Young people, I mean, old people have the same thing. It's just that they, they're, be, they're condemning the past to their future. If you really wanted to live in a free world, it's going to have to come from the old people as well as the young people. The young people are going to have to make the new things, but the old people are going to have to have the courage to supply the young people with the means for that change because the young people just don't have the resources. They just don't have the connections. You know, the perspectives that they have are relatively weak. Even the strongest people, their perspectives have not been tested through time. They haven't had the opportunity to read as many books and go through as many things and travel the world as older people have. Uh, I don't know how to end this video exactly, but I think I, I said everything pretty well that I wanted to say. I hope this, yeah. Remember this, I think it's pretty important. Don't condemn your future to your past.